Okay, Jaya Salaam Alaikum. Uh, this lecture is about dependencies that exist uh, amongst different types of activities. Uh, if you remember, we had uh, I had sort of shared a little bit of uh, some information about this with you in the OneNote uh, program that we were using uh, initially. So I'll just sort of do a little quick recap here. Right now, there are four dependencies that exist amongst. Uh, different types of activities that we can possibly have on the Gantt chart. The first dependency is known as the start to start dependency. And that is noted down as SS, uh, which means that activity A and B, as an example, would start together. So the dependency is that the starting dates of these activities is important. Uh, it is important that they begin together. Uh, the duration of these activities could vary. Uh, one could be longer than the other. So we don't care when they come to a conclusion. Rather, what we are caring for in the start to start uh, dependency is that both the activities are beginning at the same time, right? The second type of dependency that we have is called a uh, finish to start. And that is written down as uh, FS. What this means uh, that activity A must finish in order for B to start. So one activity has to run completely for its duration of time, and then that would result in a second activity being started. So the input uh, from the first one, the output of the first activity, will become the input for the second activity. So it means that there's a dependency. So the second activity cannot begin until the first one has come to a conclusion. Then we have another uh, dependency, which is known as a finish to finish dependency. And this is noted down as FF. A finish to finish dependency is the opposite of a start to start dependency. In this case, we're saying that the starting periods of these activities are, are not relevant, rather the ending dates are there. Meaning that we don't care when A began, we don't care when activity B began, rather what we care for is that both of them are coming to a conclusion together. And the last type of dependency that we have is known as a start to uh, finish dependency and that is written as SF. And that means that we are uh, saying that we may have an activity A and we may have an activity B. So we're saying, well, when, when does activity A come to a conclusion? So we're saying that we don't really know when A is going to come to a conclusion. So let's put the starting of B as the signifier that A has come to a conclusion. So this is a, an illegal uh, type of a uh, dependency because uh, this clearly means that we are not very sure about the uh, time period or the ending date of A. Uh, so if we're not very clear about that, then that sort of brings into question our ability to manage those activities better, right? So we're going to try to avoid the use of this, uh, but it can be used. And some of the better project management softwares out there uh, don't allow for this to even uh, exist within them, uh, but the project Libre that we're using does allow us to lay a level with the start to finish uh, dependency. So I'll show you how that sort of works as well, right? Uh, so let's... Uh, close this and uh, let me share with you now uh, the project library screen okay so here what i have done is that i have uh, two activities an activity a and an activity b um, kindly ignore the starting and finishing dates i've just taken whatever the software has given those as the default and I have put in the durations of A and B on this figure here. So A is 10 days in length and B is five days in length, right? 
Now, you'll notice here in the predecessor column that we have not introduced any predecessors for A and B. So they are not linked. You don't see any linking in this diagram. You have two different bars on the Gantt chart. The A is in red color and B is in blue color. It is taking A as the critical path for this um, automatically for uh, because it's the longest uh, activity so it's assuming that this is a 10 day long project and it will take 10 days to complete now we can put um, a as the predecessor for b and if you remember we read this by simply putting the index number of a which happens to exist here on the left hand side of a it says that it is uh, the first activity there right so if i put one here and I press enter, what happens is that A stays in its place, but B has moved forward, right? And it has moved towards the right-hand side on the Gantt chart. And a black arrow has popped up in this diagram, which is showing me that A will complete, the output of A will become the input for B, and then only can B begin. So we cannot begin B uh, until A has come to a conclusion. We could do this a little bit differently as well. We can say that A must finish, one must finish for B to start. So we put that as one F S, and if I press enter, you'll notice that nothing changes in this diagram, it stays the same. So activity A begins, it runs for its 10 days, then the output of A becomes the input for B, and then B uh, runs for its duration of five days, and then that comes to a conclusion. So by simply putting the predecessor or writing 1FS, we are pretty much doing the same exact thing, which is that we have now placed the finish to start dependency uh, between the two. So A must finish in order for B to start. Now, we could have a different concern here also. What if the dependency was different in the sense that we want both A and B to start together? So by putting one SS, right, one start to start, meaning that A is the predecessor and then B is going to make sure that it begins at the same time as A. And you notice here that A is still 10 days in length, B is still five days in length, so we are not caring about when they come to a conclusion. Rather, the concern here is that they begin together. So we put that, uh, introduce that into the Gantt chart by introducing this dependency of start to start. A and B must start together. This is pretty much what we're trying to say, and we do that by putting one S S here. Right now. We could have a different concern, a completely opposite concern to this, which is uh, we may say that, well, I don't care when A uh, begins or, or I don't care how long A is and I don't care when B begins or I don't care how long B is. Rather, what is important for me is that both A and B come to a conclusion at the same time. So I can put one F, F here and if I press enter, it brings that black arrow from the left-hand side of this uh, of the Gantt chart bar to the right-hand side of the bars on the Gantt chart, and now the the dependency has been introduced there, which is the finish to finish dependency. So we're we're saying that now it's not irrelevant when these activities begin; rather, their ending dates are important. So that dependency is introduced here in the form of a uh, one ff right if i simply do ff here it gives me an error message if i simply do uh oops sorry if i simply do ss here i'm also going to get an error message right so it is important to have that predecessor activity uh, notified here in, in the sense that you have to put the index number of that and then you can put the type of dependency that you want to introduce here. Now the last one is the uh, start to finish dependency which means that we're saying that I don't know when A uh, is going to finish so rather I'm going to suggest that the starting of B is going to signify the ending of A. So in that case I'm going to move 
to the top most quadrant here, uh, and I'll put uh, this as to uh, finish to start. And if I do that, you notice what happens is that A moves to the right hand side, B remains uh, in the place where it is. Uh, and something strange has happened here, which is that the starting date of A has been changed because we are now saying that A is now dependent upon B. So in a way, we're saying that the predecessor has, uh, B has become the predecessor for A, right? So maybe that's not what we want. So what if we try that here? And we say one, uh, start to finish, right? If I do that, something strange happens here. A moves again towards the right-hand side and the arrow has moved from the left side of this bar to the ending of this, right? So we're saying that the starting of A is signifying the finishing of B, right? So we're saying that A begins and, and B uh, is going to terminate whenever A begins, right? So maybe that's not what we want. What if we put two S M, right? That gives us an error message. So clearly you see that if we start putting in the uh, start to finish dependency, we get some strange uh, sort of things happening in the Gantt chart. Uh, and that's why we call this as an illegal activity because it just messes up everything. So if you do encounter that you need to use the start to finish dependency, you need to resolve it, right? You need to resolve it in the sense that you should make it either an SS, you should make it a uh, finish to start, or you should either make it as a uh, finish to finish uh, dependency and things would look uh, neat and clean and you would be able to manage your activities, right? But by putting in the uh, start to finish dependency, the whole thing just sort of becomes uh, messy and problematic. So therefore, I would encourage you not to use de this dependency. Most of uh, the project management text that we have uh, will declare this as an illegal dependency uh, and some of the better project management softwares will not even allow us to uh, sort of use this one, right? So I'll conclude this uh, now. So thank you very much for listening.